Here we start chapter three, the structure of atoms. Recall that the atom is the smallest particle of an element that still retains all of that element's characteristics. The atom is made up of subatomic particles that are called protons, neutrons, and electrons. A proton is a subatomic particle that has a positive charge. A neutron is a subatomic particle that has no charge. We say that it's neutral. An electron is a subatomic particle that has a negative charge. The nucleus is the dense region at the center of the atom that contains the protons and the neutrons. The electrons reside in the extranuclear region, and this is the region that surrounds the nucleus. The region that surrounds the nucleus, the extranuclear region, is mostly empty space, but it accounts for most of the volume of the atom, whereas the nucleus contains most of the mass of the atom. The characteristics of an atom are based on the way that the subatomic particles are arranged and also on the number of subatomic particles. Here we see solid copper. And solid copper is made up of copper atoms. The smallest particle of copper that still retains the identity of copper is the copper atom. So if we break the copper atom down into its subatomic particles, we wouldn't be able to identify it as a copper atom. It would just be a pile of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now let's go ahead and talk about the nuclear region. The nuclear region contains the nucleus, and the nucleus accounts for over 99% of the atom's mass, but less than 1% of the total volume of the atom. Protons and neutrons are referred to as nucleons. The nucleus of an atom always has a positive charge. Why? Well, the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Remember, we said that a neutron is a subatomic particle that has a neutral charge, in other words, zero charge, whereas a proton is positively charged. So it makes sense then that the nucleus of the atom has a positive charge. Now, how do we determine the mass of these atoms? Well, there's an instrument called a mass spectrometer that helps us determine the mass of small particles like atoms. We measure the mass of atoms in atomic mass units. And an atomic mass unit is a unit of mass that is equal to one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons. Atomic mass units are relative masses because all measurements of mass on this mass spectrometer are recorded relative to the mass of a carbon atom that contains six protons and six neutrons. The mass of a carbon atom that contains six protons and six neutrons is 12 atomic mass units. AMU is an abbreviation for atomic mass units. Let's try a problem. If a cobalt atom is 4.9111 times the mass of a carbon atom that contains six protons and six neutrons in its nucleus, what is the relative mass of a cobalt atom in atomic mass units? Again, we're measuring relative mass here. Well, the mass of one atom of carbon that has six protons and six neutrons is 12 atomic mass units. We were told that earlier. We are now asked to calculate the mass of a cobalt atom that is 4.9111 times heavier than the carbon atom. So the mass of the cobalt atom, then, is going to be 12 atomic mass units times 4.9111. And that would be 58.933 atomic mass units. So the cobalt atom has a relative mass of 58.933 atomic mass units. Now, let's take a look at this table. We see here that we have the mass of a proton in grams, 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. That's a very small amount. 
we could not measure that on a balance that's found in a lab. A neutron has a mass very close to that of a proton, 1.675 times 10 to the 24 grams. And an electron has a mass of 9.1094 times 10 to the negative 28 grams. An electron has a much smaller mass than a proton or neutron. Now here we have the masses listed in atomic mass units. You can see when dealing with small particles, it's much easier to use atomic mass units. In order to interconvert between grams and atomic mass units, we can use the following relationship. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.6607 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. We can see that a proton and a neutron both have a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit. Let's go ahead and calculate the mass of a carbon nucleus. We're told that this particular carbon nucleus contains six protons and seven neutrons. Calculate the mass of this nucleus in both grams and atomic mass units. We're given the number of protons and neutrons in the carbon nucleus. Each proton has a mass of 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24 grams, and each neutron has a mass of 1.675 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So in order to determine the mass in grams, we multiply the mass of each proton by 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24, and we have six protons. And then we multiply the mass of a neutron by seven, and that's because this particular neutron nucleus contains seven neutrons. And then we just sum the two together. So the mass of a carbon nucleus that has six protons and seven neutrons would be 2.176 times 10 to the negative 23 grams. Now, let's go ahead and calculate this in atomic mass units. From the table previously, each proton has a mass of 1.0073 atomic mass units, and each neutron a mass of 1.0087 atomic mass units. So again, we have six protons. We'll multiply that by 1.0073 atomic mass units, and seven neutrons. So we'll multiply seven times the mass of a neutron, which is 1.0087 atomic mass units. We sum these together, and the mass of the nucleus in atomic mass units is 13.1047. Now, let's talk a little bit about atomic number and mass number. An atom's chemical identity is determined by the number of protons in its nucleus. And this is called the atomic number and is represented by a capital Z. The elements on the periodic table are ordered by atomic number. So for example, boron has atomic number 5, carbon has Z equal to 6, nitrogen Z equal to 7, and so on. Again, the atomic number Z corresponds to the number of protons in an atom's nucleus. Now, the mass number is a little different. The mass number is represented by a capital A, and this is the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. Now, we cannot find the number of neutrons from the periodic table. You need more information to determine the number of neutrons or the mass number. In a neutral atom, the number of protons and electrons are equal. And that makes sense because a neutral atom has no charge. So let's go ahead and take a look at a problem. A, what is the name of the element with Z equals 28? Well, we look up atomic number 28 on the periodic table, and we use that to determine the identity of our element. In this case, Z equals 28 
corresponds to the element nickel. Now in part B, they tell us that A, the mass number, is 64. And we're being asked how many neutrons are in the nucleus of this nickel atom. Well, we already know from part A there are 28 protons, and the mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So that means if we subtract Z from A, that will give us the number of neutrons. So A is 64 minus Z, which is 28, and there are 36 neutrons in this particular nucleus.